All right, guys, growing your wellness business doesn't have to mean working around the clock and feeling exhausted. So welcome to the Healthy Hustle Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Feldman, and I have been in your shoes. I've been in the wellness space for over nine years, and I know what it feels like to feel overwhelmed. I took my wellness business from 13K that first year and feeling fried and exhausted to over six figures. Now I am a business coach for health and wellness professionals just like you, and I create done for you content and programs to help you save time and money so you can spend more time nailing down your niche, understanding your buyer avatar, attracting your ideal client, and building your business from the ground up the right way. So sit down and let's get started. Hey guys, it's Rachel and Michelle here at the Healthy Hustle Podcast. What we are jamming on today is how to show up with confidence. I've been talking to a lot of coaches, brand new coaches, who are nailing down their niche, their offers. But when we get to the part where I say, how are you going to market yourself? There is dead silence and a lot of fear. So today we're going to go over how to tackle that overwhelm, get in the place of confidence so that you can show up online or offline. Michelle, tell everyone when you're feeling that lack of confidence, or maybe you always do feel that confidence and you want to share like what strategies have worked. Tell everyone a little what you do. Yeah, I really dig my heels into more of a story approach. And I'd really just come from the place of like sharing my story or sharing like why I'm passionate about something specifically or like what it felt like to go through that. And I, you know, whatever it is I'm sharing and to get whatever results, you know, and I think that a lot of times coaches can feel scared of their story. And that might be a reason why they lack the confidence to show up because it requires you to show up and share. <laughs> uh, well, it requires you, know. you to actually share like what happened. Uh-huh. What life yeah. Like? <laughs> yeah. What did you learn from this and what do you teach? Yeah. And I think it's really important to practice it even on a smaller level, you know, start with a shorter video or a recorded video, you know, or a, a smaller post rather than a longer one and kind of dip your toes into it. And then you'll see like your audience start responding, you know, people will even message you for inspiration, but just to really just like let go of the outcome, if that makes sense. That's probably what I do the most is that I let go of the outcome. Like when I really share something, I'm doing it more for me, knowing that it'll reach whoever needs to, it needs to reach, but I don't care about the outcome. Like if someone messaged me or someone likes it or comments, like that's a, great bonus thing to happen. Right. But it's not the sole purpose of why I'm doing it. I'm really doing it because I want someone to know, like, if you can, like I got through this and you can too. And when you really approach it from that way, you kind of become service-based way service, yeah. based, not, I think not letting ego get in the way because mm-hmm. ego is where we're worried about what everyone thinks. And mm-hmm. I know that I went through times where I had that, like, fuck it attitude. That was actually how I started showing up because I was so overwhelmed, had so much anxiety about showing up and this fear that I would sound stupid or that I didn't know what I was talking about to kind of just saying, screw it. I'm Mm -hmm. going to start before I'm ready and just go after it. So when we're thinking about showing up, because I think every coach always asks me the same question. They're like, I know my niche now, super happy about that. I've mapped out my programs. Mm -hmm. I know what I have for my low cost offer, what I have for my higher ticket. They're like already. And then it comes to how do I promote myself? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about a little, you know, ways that we can build that confidence to be able to show up. What are like three ways that you feel that you build confidence to be able to show up? Or maybe there's an example yeah. you have of a coach that you've worked with. Yeah, I would say the first thing was journaling is really important for me. It helps me. It's always been helpful to really, you know, and have the right writing prompts, like not to just journal just thoughts, but like what is 
what do I feel right now? Like, why do I think I'm feeling this way? Like what's holding me back, you know, and what, what can I do right now to like take one step forward and kind of start right. fixing it, you know, not thinking big picture of like, how do I fix this whole thing right now? But really how can I just take one step out of this feeling that's holding me back? And that's been really, really helpful. Even in the past, like I hired a coach to actually help me with that and help me reach my goals. And, you know, she was very focused on journaling. And I just found that So the second thing to that would be accountability, right? So it's like, for me, it was journaling. It was to accountability, having someone that could really hold me accountable to whatever goal I had so that I could really, like, if your goal is showing up and you're really having a hard time, like it doesn't even have to be someone you pay as a coach. It could be like a peer. It could be someone, Mm -hmm. you know, like from your school that you went to or a friend or someone who's also in business, someone with the same goal, just somebody to like, you know, just hold you accountable, like to what you really want, you know? And that third thing would be to really take the actual step forward. Like you're never going to get anywhere if you're just standing still not doing it. Even if it's the smallest step, like if someone's afraid to do video live, then record the video, you know, just take one notch down until you have the confidence to do it. Yeah. You know, if you're afraid to do a reel, like do a post first, you know, or put something on your story first, you know, like just kind of like taking that initial step to start progressing and not worrying about, well, like I'm too afraid to do this thing. Well, that's fine. You know, but start doing the small things to take the steps to the big thing, you know? Well, and I think at this current time in the industry, we have to step out of our comfort zone. Because there are so many, the algorithms are not favoring anything but video. And Mm -hmm. so it's like getting out of the comfort zone and saying, if I'm scared to be on camera, I'm going to make a reel and I'm going to make it in Canva, you know, with a video there, or I'm going to make it in Canva with an image and put music to it. It's like Mm -hmm. taking that step. If I'm scared to do video, I'm going to do a video on like introducing myself. Mm-hmm. And really short and just talk about like what you do, who you do it for and practice that until you get comfortable, shoot that video on your phone or shoot that video on zoom, upload it to YouTube and keep it unlisted because there's a public option and there's an unlisted <laughs> option where no one can see, but it's like, take the opportunity to record a video just like that, a video on a freebie, a mm-hmm. video on a training. I mean, one of my favorite things that I, that I think about early in my career is I sat there and I was like, how am I going to get visible when everyone else has this epic marketing? I can't afford a marketing person. You know, my social media wasn't great, but it's like, I had to say, screw it. And Mm -hmm. I started baby steps and thinking if my ideal client, is out there searching for these problems. I'm going to make a video on each one of these problems and have Mm -hmm. them on YouTube. Then I can, in that description, lead them to a freebie or lead them to a discovery call and start to get myself out there in a place that I feel people really go to Google and find their information. Yeah. Yeah, and also really remembering, like, why are you doing this? You know, like if you were you have to talk to people, right? So like, you're going to eventually coach them. So it's really like, why are you doing this? And how can you really reach people? Like if you keep all of your skill set and your experience and your knowledge to yourself, then you're not serving the people that you're really here to serve. And the best way to do that is to start showing up for them. You have to be visible for them to see you. You have to show that you know what you're talking about, you know, otherwise those people you know, if you can't do it for yourself right now, like do it for the people that you're supposed to help, because that's, you know, there has to be a reason that you're doing this to begin with. I love that because when we show up and we think about the task, the fear comes in, but when we get Mm -hmm. service-based, that fear starts to slip away. And I would also say for that person that's really scared to get out there, Even going offline and reaching out to local vendors, local places like juice shops and health food stores and gyms, you know, that can feel scary too. But it's Mm -hmm. like you go in in the ways that I went in. I took my computer in. Yeah. 
introduced myself, took my computer and showed them programs or showed them, you know, shopping tours or showed them PowerPoints that I had on like weight loss and juicing Mm -hmm. and autoimmune and digestive health and actually was like the walking business card. And yeah. so that can feel scary, but it's like, we just have to push past that fear mm-hmm. because if not, we sit there and then we go and we over-certify ourselves. Mm-hmm. We over-certify ourselves. We sit there and we think that we don't know enough. So we go to all these different classes and courses and we're still not out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think when you have like, you know, a brochure or a flyer or business cards, you know, when you're walking into a place, it helps build confidence, you know, because you're approaching it like a professional and then you also have something to show. Right. And so I always went in with like my brochures, my flyers, you know, for if I was doing a program or like my business card. And it really gave me the confidence to just walk in there feeling like, okay, yeah, this is like my business. I could do this, (laughs) you know? And I think the part is that you have to, in order to have that confidence to go in, you do have to know who you serve. Absolutely. What your problems are. I had a coach. She is such a sweetheart and she signed up for a discovery call. And I said to her in the email before our call, I said, who do you serve? Mm. What are their biggest problems? And she couldn't answer it in an email. And I said, don't worry, don't, don't feel overwhelmed. Let's not get you overwhelmed. Let's just get on a call. She sat there and she was like, well, I don't know. I just, I know that I want to serve these women, these Mm -hmm. busy moms. And I said to her, but you need to know like why these busy moms buy. You need to know what they're searching for on the internet. Mm -hmm. So that you can provide that. So you grab their attention and you can lead them down the path of working with you. Mm -hmm. She took like three weeks from that initial call to go and figure out what were her freebies? Mm -hmm. Why did they solve the problem that her mom, she kept saying, well, you know, this is this busy mom. And I was like, right, this busy mom, her objection is that she's going to be too busy to do this. But what is the reason that she's coming to you? And finally, it's like that came out like she really wants to lose weight. She's either just had babies or she's got young kids. She's like fallen short of taking care of herself. That's the reason that she's buying for her specific, you know, need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once she got clear with that, she even was like, oh my God, my confidence, my excitement is there. And yeah. then she was able to map out a low cost offer. She was able to map out the next journey, the next step they wanted to take or the next step they were going to take with her. All of a sudden, I said to her at that next meeting that we had, I was like, are you now confident enough to go and do videos on YouTube Mm -hmm. to put up a clear profile on Instagram, something that somebody is going to know exactly why they are there instead of just posts that are great and they Mm -hmm. might be inspirational but they don't make any sense to why that woman would want to stay there and buy. Yeah. She was like, yes, I think that I'm going to do that. I'm going to do your unlisted video challenge where I do the videos, keep them unlisted. Because she was like, I really want to help this person. Yeah. Once that really came out, it was like the confidence was there. Her face looked totally different. She was sitting up higher. And I just know that she's going to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's such a, that's such a big deal, you know, to know when you know your message, you can talk it, you can live it, you can show up with it. And that's, that's definitely huge is to actually know who you're talking to with your message. You know, what would you say for that coach? Let's even talk about that because getting out there, we have Facebook groups, Mm -hmm. we have your Facebook business page. We also have our personal page, which we can share about our behind the scenes our why. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we can share the excitement, like our freebies, we can do lives, we can bring people in there, we can go offline, we have Instagram, we have TikTok, we have a lot of places that we have to show up. I always suggest picking like two platforms, and then learning that getting comfortable with the showing up. And then crushing it by repurposing the same content on other platforms. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the best way because I always find that like sometimes coaches will get really overwhelmed when they think like, oh, I got to be 
all my social media profiles have to be completely updated and I got to be everywhere posting in all different ways. But if you just, you know, create one quality piece of content and then you just share it and disperse it to the other platforms, you're not really having to be there doing, it doesn't take so much time. You save time, you still reach a broader, you know, audience and it just really helps, you know. And being able, I think, showing up is also knowing what to post. So it's like really Mm -hmm. looking at your niche, Mm -hmm. niche topic, the problems that they have offering the solution, your sub niche, Mm -hmm. and then really going by categories. Like you're behind the scenes, your why, an introduction post. um, And really emotionally connected. Yeah. Like what does it feel like for that person to be going through what they're going through? If you can tap into that, then you'll have captivating posts everywhere. Like really describe what it feels like currently for them. And then also now you're on the other side of that. What does it feel like to not have to be going through that anymore? And I think that the more that people see that connection, right. And that like empathy connection, then they, they start engaging with you and messaging and checking you out. (laughs) You know, how can I really work with this person? You know? Well, and then you actually get that person to start going to your different profiles, signing Mm -hmm. up for the base. I mean, I know that when I think of the clients that I've coached, they all were really intuitive women who started showing up and just sharing. I mean, not needing it to be perfect, just showing up and sharing about client problems, about their own problems that they had and they overcome, even current problems that they're struggling with, and really let their ideal client get to know them because people buy people and then they buy products. Exactly. (laughs) Really letting that true personality out. And I think when we do that, coming up with social media content does not feel as overwhelming. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, I think that's definitely the key. You know, you just have to own a little bit of your confidence, you know, too. You've you've gone this far, you've gotten the education, you know, have the experience, you've helped people, even if you don't have clients yet, you've I'm sure helped people for free, right? Anyone who's listening, we all start with our friends and our family and everyone first and really step into that. Like this is your purpose. So that's what you should be doing. And I think the last thing that I want to touch on for this shorty podcast episode is that sometimes that confidence stuff gets triggered when we do start to put ourselves out there. So it's really take a look at what also is happening in your life. Take a look at like where this confidence piece is showing up and why there's a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. Is there something in your life where you're not feeling supported? Is there something that's going on that's a past thing that you need to kind of address? Because Mm -hmm. that confidence is a lot of that self-worth, self-love, self-care kind of connection. So as coaches, we really need to be cognizant. Coming from a nine to five, unless you're coming from like a sales kind of position, Mm -hmm. you don't, or independent contractor. I mean, I was an independent contractor coming from real estate. Yeah. Like it felt very different Mm -hmm. when I came into the health and wellness space because I was selling me. I was selling the building before. And of course, people were working with me because they trusted me because they knew I would never BS them. Mm -hmm. They knew I had their best interest at heart. But when I came into the health and wellness space, all my insecurities came up. Mm -hmm. And I, that confidence piece, that confidence piece played out because we're talking about showing up, but it's like, also, how are you showing up to a sales conversation Mm -hmm. in a discovery call? How are you showing up when you have a presentation? Mm -hmm. It's like, I think getting that confidence and working on that by practicing, practicing how you're doing these workshops, practicing the live, like doing the things that don't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm strengthening those muscles. Exactly. Yeah. That's definitely a muscle builder for sure. And I think that's really the key, you know, and just to continually do that, like, don't stop. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we'll close it out with like, start before you're entirely ready. Mm -hmm. There's, there's not in, in 12 years of being in this business, 
there is not this one time that somebody gave me this like perfect map and it worked out. I had to learn how to pivot. I had Mm -hmm. to learn in showing up where I made the biggest impact, where Mm -hmm. I felt the most comfortable in the different social media platforms. I had to, I had to get comfortable speaking in front of people because I knew, I knew that that area of practicing was going to get me further in my business. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. When I first started, I was like petrified to be speaking to a room full of people. (laughs) And now I'm just like, now actually it's even changed in my personal life because now I've done it so much business wise that now it's really brought me even out of my shell, even at like local events and parties and just even family things, you know, now I'm like the person who will strike a conversation and I never really was. I think a lot of that has to do with just the habit of showing up for work all the time and in conversations and podcasts or whatever, like just really showing up and, and just being owning who you are, you know, I think that's the key to it is owning who you are, not trying to be anyone but yourself. Mm-hmm. If we do that. It's really difficult to keep that up. And I think that's the yeah. part that feels exhausting. Exactly. I know when I compare myself to other people, that confidence piece gets triggered and it's not yeah. there. So I've learned to just stay in my own lane Mm-hmm. start to compare myself to other people because we have to have some level of comparison to do market research. Yeah. We need to compare to see what other people are doing, but it's like, take that inventory, step back, make sure that that confidence muscle is being built on a daily basis and being massaged mm-hmm. and being and yeah. then show up in the places that you feel your ideal client is hanging out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so true. do you have a last tidbit that you want to give everyone at their sign off? Yeah, to start today, <laughs> I would say definitely to start today because there, you know, like you said, there never is a right time to start. And if you start now, you know, you'll be much further next week, tomorrow, you know, than, than you would be if you didn't. Right. And if you don't, you'll be sitting there bitching about the same thing in a year. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and to remember that that pain is temporary of that overwhelm. Mm -hmm. That's the part that we always forget. If it feels overwhelming, you know, showing up, it's like, take it in baby steps, Mm -hmm. reach out to one local place and see if you can do a workshop for them. Know what the workshop is, practice the workshop, do Mm -hmm. it in front of your significant other or your partner or friend. It's like, do it on zoom and practice it. And then see how you sound and like no judgment. It's only going to get better over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys. So this is homework. Homework is to show up on that platform that you may have you a little scared, but you know, you need to be there. We all have that list of platforms that we're like, I've got to learn that. Go and learn it. Be comfortable. It doesn't matter whether you're online or offline. And remember, even if you're working offline, you can still drive people to your signature training, to your signature freebie. You can bring people in the offline space to the online and even sell them to your programs, which could be online, like a self-paced program, or it could be a group that you're doing. Remember, there can be a hybrid approach to your work. So I hope you have a great week. We will talk to you next week and keep it real. Bye, guys. All right, guys, that is all for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the show so you don't miss any future episodes. While you're there, it would mean the world to me if you take just a few seconds and leave me an honest review. Truth is, I love honesty. Your reviews help me to reach even more health coaches and wellness professionals who are ready to explode their business and want the truth in this non-BS approach. You can find all the links and the information mentioned in this episode at www.rachelafeldman.com backslash podcast. All right, so don't forget to tag me on Instagram at Rachel A. Feldman and let me know what was your favorite part of the episode. This will help me to create even better content for you, bring on awesome peeps to tell you the truth about how they built their business, plus other speakers to help you take your business to the top without overwhelm. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys soon.